Anna Pearl, welcome to Exploring Chiropractic. Thanks so much for being on the show. You're very welcome. My pleasure. You recently got back from NCLC. Can you tell other students what that is? Okay, so NCLC is the National Legislative Conference of Chiropractic, um, although I think they're moving towards leadership versus legislative. Um, it takes place in Washington, D.C. once a year in the month of February. And it's just really a great opportunity for the parent organization, the American Chiropractic Association, to meet with all the student chapters, the uh, Student American Chiropractic Association. Um, we also do legislating, um, which I can talk more about if you have more questions about um, the legislating that we did on Capitol Hill. And there's um, all kinds of conferences that you can sit in on as a student. Um, as well as networking and meeting with doctors, as well as senators and congresspeople. So it's a way for students to get into the politics of the, of the profession. Yes. So what, what were some of the big key legislative items? So we had three bills that we were pushing through. They're already sponsored. Um, so the ACA does a great job of doing the legwork beforehand. So we're given bills um, that we're going to be trying to convince Congress people and senators to endorse or vote yes or no on when the voting comes up. So two of the three had to deal with uh, veterans' access to chiropractic. Um, I don't know how much you know or how much the listeners know about um, what a big uh, deal it is for chiropractors to be in the VA hospitals. Yeah, it's um, a really big deal. A lot of schools are getting um, programs inside the VA so that whether it's the, you know, what your, your clinic experience in school is at a VA for a mm -hmm. few weeks or it's almost a residency once you graduate. Yes, it's really awesome. But right now the problem is only about 50 VA institutions uh, are doing that. There's 100 additional ones that don't have chiropractic services. So the issue is that, oops, sorry, they're all supposed to um, have each, uh, each VA facility should have chiropractors there or chiropractors that they are in network, so to speak. Um, and so there's the 100 facilities that don't have it. It's because of a lack of budgeting, right? So they're mandated to do it, but there's no funding. So um, the specific name of that bill is HR, what was it? HR 802. I'm looking at my notes. Um, so this one was to uh, kind of expand and reinforce and reiterate a bill that was already passed. And all of these bills, by the way, have bipartisan support. Um, the people, the representatives that endorse them. It's not a political issue. It's an issue of uh, bettering our profession as well as veterans' access to care. So that was one of the bills. Um, then there was a, a similar bill in the Senate that we pushed through. Um, that's S-398. And that's expanding once you're um, discharged from service, um, if you're inactive, you're no longer eligible for chiropractic benefits. So that's to take care of that. Um, the families of, car of uh, veterans, as well as the, um, unfortunately, like the widows and widowers um, of veterans, so that they also have access. And then the last one is really pertinent to us as students, and that's HR 542, and that's allowing chiropractors to be part of the health core, health service core. And that gives um, us the opportunity to have loan forgiveness? Yes, it does. So That you is spend, hugely important. Yes, yeah, so you spend two years in the specific term is called a health professional shortage area. Um, so we basically, you sign on to work in one of these areas for two years and you can get, it just depends on how long you're there, um, the specific need to, to what degree, how much loan forgiveness you get. Some of it's all of it. So it's pretty, pretty awesome as a student to be pushing for that bill. Yeah, that one's great. I'm reading a lot about how difficult it is for chiropractic students because the loans are so huge once we graduate. Yeah. Um, and speaking of finances, one of the reasons I was hoping to go to NCLC this year is because of the scholarships that are offered. I wasn't yeah. able to make it, but a friend of mine did, and you probably met him, Brent Fries. Oh, yeah. 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 And so the two of you did a, a couple of scholarships. Which scholarships did you apply for? So there were two um, that were available only to students that are SACA members, as well as attended the NCLC conference, which is how many people, I mean, several hundred, 
but how many people actually apply um, to those kinds of things. So I did two videos. Um, the second scholarship, so one was from Standard Process, um, talking about what you want to teach your patients. And the other one was from the ACA, the American Chiropractic Association. Both were video scholarships. Um, and I was fortunate enough, and I think Brent got both of them as well. We were two people I that got did, yeah. both of them, which was really awesome. And I was surprised. I was like, oh, you know, one of them I kind of threw together last minute. But I did some research as to why the, the, the prompt was uh, an elevator speech to why um, other professions should collaborate with chiropractors so I did some research on the numbers and things like that and they actually responded because I didn't that one didn't have very high production value my other one I had friends who were composers and film editors help me with that one okay so you did have some help your first one I think it was called uh farm to table or garden to table garden to table that's yeah. right and it really was I watched it and I was like wow this is really great production value how much time yes. and effort did you put into that a lot. <laughs> um, so I wrote a script, I did storyboarding, I did the whole nine yards, but that's not to discourage other people from doing it simple because the other one I did, I set it up in this same room on an iPhone, a smartphone, and I just talked. So um, I was not to discourage people from applying. 12 people sent in videos for the standard process scholarship, which I was um, surprised and then I made it to the top eight and then they did it based on voting and then same I don't know how many people ended up applying for the ACA one but again they left it up to to voting yeah so there was a voting component it sounded like in the end there was also um there was some judging uh, beyond yes. the voting I think so um a really uh, nice guy who I got the pleasure of meeting. He, I think, um, got the most votes, but I don't think, um, for the AC, I don't think they gave him any money. So they did say something about, like, um, yeah, your judge's score. Um, so you sent in a resume, I should say, a CV, um, a list of contributions, what you feel you've contributed to the chiropractic profession, GPA, transcript. So there is that aspect, too. I think for the standard scholarship, there were eight finalists. And so yes. there was a YouTube playlist and anybody could vote. And it was just based on the likes on the video. And then yes. for the for the other one, I think it was maybe four finalists or were there five? Yeah, five finalists and then three people received the scholarships. And four people received the standard process, I think. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. And I hope you don't mind because I think the information was public, but how much yeah. were the scholarships for? S yeah, absolutely. So the standard process was $2,500. And then to be honest, because I still haven't gotten either of my checks yet, um, I want to say it was thirteen seventy five. It was a weird number for the ACA. But I mean, you think about it, you know, as a student, it's hard. You think shelling out the money. Um, but for us, and all the schools do a lot of really awesome fundraising. So if you're interested in going as a student um, for next year, $350. I mean, coming out from LA, you're on the uh, West Coast too. $350 for the hotel and the flight and the conference fee. It really isn't that bad in the scheme of things. As a student, it can get kind of hard, you know. Um, but I came away, you know, with $3,000. So you came you know, away in the positive. And I think that's, in the positive, the, yeah. that's what I think is so great about NCLC is that you do have these scholarship opportunities. Yeah. And so it can even be a, uh, a benefit for you to go. If you spend the time to do these scholarships, put in a little bit of effort, because you're right, mm -hmm. I think most people, it looked like to me, did it on their iPhones and yeah, yeah. hardly any editing and that stuff. So, yes. Um, do you think students should apply for more scholarships? Absolutely. I'm a scholarship junkie. I always have been. I'm one of those fortunate people through a combination of financial aid and scholarships. I came out of undergrad debt free. So I've always had that mentality, like, go look. They're out there. And the best ones to go for, I mean, I find in my experience, are the local ones. Like, if there's something to do with even just, um, you know, your city, your city um, philanthropic groups, like, for instance, the Seroptimist Cl Club, which is a women's philanthropy, international philanthropy group, um, they had a the Ruth White Memorial Scholarship, and I received that last year, and they actually invited me to apply again this year because application rates are very low. People don't go out of their way, and so these local small ones are the ones that I tend to get. Um, 
the national ones, like I applied for, there's a Tylenol $10,000 healthcare one. I looked through the list of recipients, though, not a single one with a chiropractor. So I think if more students apply, it, I would love to see a fellow chiropractic student on that list win one of those scholarships, because not only would that be good for that student, that's great for the profession. One that I was really interested in last year was from the Ripple Effect. Uh, and it was a pretty cool scholarship because I think it was it was a big chunk of money, 10, maybe even mm -hmm. 20,000. But then you wow. also got to go on almost a Peace Corps type trip with a, with a group. I think it's from Welsh Allen who does a lot of the, um, you know, sphygmomanometers. Yes. <laughs> How you yeah. say that? The blood pressure cuffs, the yeah. ophthalmoscopes, the, uh, all the medical equipment. Uh, and mm -hmm. the ripple effect is kind of a subsidiary of theirs. So I, and I see the same thing there, though there aren't very many scholarships for chiropractic specifically, mm -hmm. the ones that there are standard process, local ones at the school, hardly anybody really applies. Mm -hmm. If you could create a scholarship, if, if someone gave you $10,000, what would it require? Um, I probably wouldn't do a video scholarship because as a student, it was very stressful to, I think, put in the time that I thought would be worthy of putting something online that everyone was going to see. And I mean, that's how you met me sort of too. So I kind of knew that I wanted to make sure that was really professional and put together. Um, I also was an English lit major, so I love writing. So I would a very short essay um, and concise. And of course, I think, you know, based on financial need too, um, I think GPA, you know, there's a lot of students um, because in the state of California, I know in Florida and other states, you have to have a bachelor's degree. But I know um, in in California, you don't have to have a bachelor's as long as you get your doctorate and you have some undergraduate credits, you can still become a, a DC. Um, and I know a lot of those people struggle to, uh, well, one, adjusting to that crazy academic schedule, but also financially. Um, and so I, I don't know if I would necessarily put so much emphasis on GPA, um, but more on, on merit and um, and what they really want to do and put back into the profession. Um, I think that's one thing, being a part of the ACA, I'm very much looking towards the future. I will be an ACA member. I'm not going to let it lapse after becoming a student. Um, there's too much work to be done. And grades are important, but it turns out that those that get 4.0s and valedictorians aren't necessarily the ones that are most successful and that push the, the profession forward. Mm -hmm. So I think that's cool. And I might be a bit... Um, uh, grumpy, I guess, but I had kind of a similar experience in my undergraduate. I didn't get very many scholarships, uh, and the ones I did get were were quite small. Even though I was uh, working 20 hours a week to try to help pay for school, I was doing extracurricular stuff 20 hours a week. And then there were other students who had family that worked for the school that already had full tuition, and then they would get uh, full tuition scholarships on that. Yeah. You know, so I think I, I too, if I had the money, I, I would try to pick out those who are working hard, even though their grades may not show it, are still working hard and making a huge effort. So that's pretty cool. Well, thanks for sharing your experience with the scholarships and going to NCLC. Of course. Thank you.